Good day everyone! In the previous discussion, you were able to evaluate the limits of a rational function. In this lesson, the limits of radical functions will be discussed. And I hope that at the end of the lesson, you should be able to achieve our learning target, which is to evaluate the limit of radical functions. Just a review, a radical function is, it is a function having a polynomial under the radical sign. And these are some examples of radical functions. We have f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 2. We also have y is equal to the cube root of x squared minus 5. And h of x is equal to 9 times the fourth root of 2x minus 7. So let's evaluate the limit of square root of 2x plus 5 as x approaches to 2 applying the basic law. So applying the root law. This is equal to the square root of the entire quantity, limit of 2x plus 5, as x approaches to 2. And this is equal to the square root of the limit of 2x as x approaches to 2, plus the limit of 5 as x approaches to 2, applying the sum law. And this is equal to the square root of the 2 limit of x as x approaches to 2, plus 5, applying the constant multiple law and the limit of a constant function, then this is equal to the square root of 2 times 2 plus 5 by the limit of an identity function then this is equal to the square root of 9 and square root of 9 is equal to 3. Therefore, the limit of the square root of 2x plus 5 as x approaches to 2 is equal to 3 applying the Or the limit of the square root of 2x plus 5 as x approaches to 2 is equal to 3 by the limit law. Now, another way of solving the limit of a rad radical function is by using the given theorem, the theorem 2.2.3. It states that if f of x is equal to the nth root of p of x, where p of x is a polynomial in x, then the limit of the nth root of p of x as x approaches to c is equal to the nth root of p of z for any real number c. And these are notation for theorem 2.2.3. Now, let us use the theorem 2.2.3 to evaluate our previous example. So we have here limit of the square root of 2x plus 5 as x approaches to 2 by the given theorem. This is equal to the square root of 2 times 2 plus 5. Basically, you, what you will do here is just apply direct substitution by substituting the value of your x as 2 since rc in the given example is 2. Then simplify. This is equal to the square root of 4 plus 5. And the square root of 4 plus 5 is 9. And the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So by theorem 2.2.3, the limit of the square root of 2x plus 5 as x approaches to 2 is equal to 3. But there are also times when a radical function could be indeterminate. So consider this example. Okay, let's evaluate the limit of x minus 9 all over the square root of x minus 3 as x approaches to 9 by theorem 2.2.3 or by applying direct substitution. So we will substitute the value of your x here as 9 we have 9 minus 9 all over the square root of 9 minus 3 and that's equal to 0 over 0. This is an indeterminate form, right? So this means that we need to simplify the function x minus 9 over the square root of x minus 3 by rationalizing technique. And these are the steps in evaluating the limit of a radical functions by rationalizing technique. So first, we will rationalize the denominator since the denominator of the given function has a radical expression. So we will rationalize the, the denominator by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. And the conjugate of square root of x minus 3 is square root of x plus 3. So observe here, I multiply the square root of x plus 3 in the numerator as well as in the in the denominator then simplify the x minus 9 times the square root of x plus 3 is equal to the quantity of x minus 9 times the quantity of square root of x plus 3 so just 
stay at it is the product of the numerator times numerator you don't need to distribute for us to easily eliminate the common factors for the numerator and denominator and the square root of x minus 3 times the square root of x plus 3 this is equal to the square root of x squared minus 9 if you observe here the square root of x squared minus 9 is an expression a difference of two squares okay then simplify just copy the numerator the square root of x squared minus 9 is basically equal to x minus 9 because your square root of x squared is just x then copy minus 9 so observe here that there is a common factor which is x minus 9 so we will eliminate x minus 9 then the remaining expression is the square root of x plus 3 then for step 2 we will evaluate the limit of the resulting expression so in this case we will evaluate the limit of the quantity square root of x plus 3 as x approaches to 9 then by direct substitution we have square root of 9 plus 3 and that's equal to 3 plus 3 and is equal to 6 therefore the limit of x minus 9 all over the square root of x minus 3 as x approaches to 9 is equal to 6 okay now another example for you to easily understand for you to easily understand the concept. So let's evaluate the limit of the square root of x minus 2 all over x minus 4 as x approaches to 4. So by direct substitution, in this case, we will substitute the value of your x as 4. So we have here the square root of 4 minus 2 all over 4 minus 4. And still, that's equal to 0 over 0, an indeterminate form. So this means that we need to simplify the given radical function by rationalizing technique so we will rationalize the numerator since the numerator has a radical expression so the square root of x minus 2 all over x minus 4 we will multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the square root of x minus 2 and the conjugate of square root of x minus 2 is square root of x plus 2 Okay, again, we will multiply the square root of x plus 2 in both the numerator and the denominator. Then, the square root of x minus 2 times square root of x plus 2, basically that's equal to the square root of x squared minus 4. And x minus 4 times the square root of x plus 2, it's equal to x minus 4 times the quantity of square root of x plus 2. Again, you don't need to distribute this one, so we can easily eliminate the common factor. Okay, so we will simplify then the numerator, the square root of x squared minus 4, basically that's equal to x minus 4. So observe here, our common factor is x minus 4, eliminate the x minus 4, so the remaining expression is 1 all over the square root of x plus 2. Then for the second step, we will evaluate the limit of the resulting expression, so in this case, the limit of the entire quantity 1 all over the square root of x plus 2 as x approaches to 4 by direct substitution so you have 1 all over the square root of 4 plus 2 simplify you have 1 over 2 plus 2 and that's equal to 1 fourth therefore the limit of the square root of x minus 2 all over x minus 4 as x approaches to 4 is equal to 1 fourth so to sum it up these are the key points to remember in evaluating the the limit of a radical function. First, the limit of the radical function, this is radical function, f of x is equal to the nth root of p of x. Okay, again, the key points to remember in evaluating the limit of a radical function. First, the limit of the radical function f of x is equal to the nth root of p of x, where p of x is a polynomial in x as x approaches c is nth root of p of c for any real number c and if n is even then the p of c is greater than or equal to zero so basically you just apply direct substitution first then observe if the given function is in determinate form or not 
So if the given function is indeterminate form, then we can use rationalizing technique to evaluate the indeterminate forms of the functions of type zero over zero. So to verify if the function is indeterminate, evaluate at x is equal to c. So again, I hope that you learned something today. And with that, see you on our next video and have a nice day, everyone.